This is an example on using the Xbox method of factoring to factor quadratic equations. We're going to start this example with the expression negative 2x squared plus 16x minus 30. Now before you can use the Xbox method of factoring, you have to take out any greatest common factor that's in all three of these terms. If you don't take out the greatest common factor, then the Xbox method of factoring might not work. You also want to make sure that the leading coefficient, or the number that's being multiplied by x squared, this number here has to be positive. If it's not positive, then you need to factor out a negative 1 from all three of these terms before you can use the Xbox method of factoring. In this particular equation, all three of these numbers, 2, 16, and 30, are all divisible by 2. So I'm going to factor a 2 from all three of these. I'm going to make that a negative 2 because my leading coefficient, or the coefficient in front of my x squared, is negative. So if I factor out a negative 2, I'll have negative 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 15. Now that my leading coefficient on my quadratic is positive and I factored out all my greatest common factors, I'm going to use the Xbox method of factoring on this quadratic equation, x squared minus 8x plus 15. Now to use the Xbox method of factoring, first you draw a big X. Then you take the coefficient in front of your x squared term, which in this case is 1, and your constant term, or the number without an x on it. So in this case, 15. Take 15 and 1 and multiply them together. You get 15, and you write that in the top part of your x, 15. Then you take your middle term, or your linear term coefficient, this negative 8 the number being multiplied by 1x. This negative 8 goes in the bottom. Then go back up to the top where you have this 15 and you need to find all the factors of 15. Those are 15 and 1 and 5 and 3. Then go back to your top number. If this top number is positive, then you want to add your factors. So 15 plus 1, 5 plus 3. 15 plus 1 is 16, 5 plus 3 is 8. Now ignoring this negative, if any of your factors added together are the same as this number, then you found your factors. In this case, we have an 8 and we have an 8. So our factors then are 5 and 3. However, this is negative. Now you got to pay attention to this negative on this final term. Since this is negative, that means both of these factors are negative. Because these two numbers have to add together to get this number, and they have to multiply together to get that one. Negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. Negative 5 plus negative 3 is a negative 8. So those are our factors. So we draw our parentheses. And we go back to this leading coefficient. This is a 1. So both of these parentheses will have a 1x, or just x in them, and then a minus 5 and a minus 3. So these are our factors. Don't forget about our negative 2. Put that out front from here. And this is the factored form of our quadratic equation. Now let's try another example. Here we have 2x squared minus 11x plus 15. Here our leading coefficient, or the number multiplied by x squared, is positive. So we don't have to worry about that. We need to look for any greatest common factors. But it doesn't appear that there are any. So we're ready to start the Xbox method of factoring. So we draw our big X. Then we take 
the number being multiplied by x squared, or the coefficient of our x squared term, this two, and our constant term, or the number without an x, this 15, and we multiply them together. Two times 15 is 30. Our middle term, or our linear term coefficient here, this negative 11, that goes in the bottom. And now we need all the factors of 30. Well, those are 30 and one, 15 and two, 10 and three, and six and five. Now because this 30 is positive, we're going to add our factors. 30 and one is 31, 15 and two is 17, 10 and three is 13, and six and five is 11. Now hopefully some of these added factors will equal this negative 11. Well, we have 11 here and we have a negative 11, which means our factors are six and five. So six and five. But since this is a negative 11 and I want these two numbers to add to get this, I have to make both of these negative. I have a negative six and a negative five. Now negative six plus negative five will get us negative 11 and negative six times negative five will get us a positive 30. So I found my factors. Go back to my leading coefficient here, I have a two x squared. That means I have a two x and a two x and then a minus six and a minus five. Now you may notice that if I took two x and multiplied it by two x, I would get four x squared, not two x squared. The final step in the Xbox method of factoring is to look at any of these binomials and to reduce them. This first one here, this two x minus six, I can take a two out of both of these. So this is gonna become x minus three. This two x minus five I can't do anything with, so it just comes along. And the factored form of my equation then is x minus three times two x minus five. And that's the factored form of our quadratic equation. If you FOIL this out, you'll get two x squared minus 11 x plus 15. In fact, if you ever have a coefficient other than one in front of your x squared, that's a clue that you're going to have to reduce one of your binomials, if not both of them. Now let's try one more problem that's a little bit more challenging. Here we have 28x squared plus 51x minus 27. The coefficient on my x squared term, this leading coefficient, is positive, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm looking for greatest common factors, but it doesn't appear that there are any. So I'm ready to do the Xbox method of factoring. So I draw my big X. I take the coefficient of my X squared term, which in this case is 28, and my constant term, the one without an X, and in this case that's negative 27. 28 times negative 27 is negative 756. Take my linear coefficient, or this 51, and that goes in the bottom. And now I need all the factors of 756, ignoring the negative for now. Well, there's lots of factors of 756. There's 756 and one, 378 and two, 252 and three, 189 and four, 126 and six, 108 and seven, 84 and nine, 63 and 12, 54 and 14, 42 and 18, 36 and 21, and 28 and 27. Those are all of my factors of 756. 
Now this 756, this is a negative 756. And because this is negative, that means this time I'm going to subtract all of my factors. 756 minus 1 is 755. 378 minus 2 is 376. 252 minus 3 is 249. 189 minus 4 is 185. 126 minus 6 is 120. 108 minus 7 is 101. 84 minus 9 is 75. 63 minus 12 is 51. 54 minus 14 is 40. 42 minus 18, that's 24. 36 minus 21 is equal to 15. And 28 minus 27 is 1. Now hopefully one of these subtractions will get us 51. And we do have one. It's 63 and 12. Subtracted get us 51. So our factors then are going to be 63 and 12. But now when I multiply 63 and 12, I'll get a positive 756, not a negative 756. So that means one of these two numbers has to be negative. Well, I also want these numbers to add together to get a positive 51. So because 51 is positive, that means the bigger of my two factors has to be positive. So the 63 has to be positive, and that makes the 12 negative. 63 times negative 12 will get you negative 756. 63 plus negative 12 will get you a positive 51. So here we have our factors. Now we have a 28 here in front of our x squared, which means we're going to have a 28x plus 63 times 28x minus 12. Now 28x times 28x will not get us 28x squared. So we're going to have to reduce these binomials here. This first binomial, 28x plus 63, I can take out a 7 from both of these. So this is going to become 4x plus 9. Our second binomial here, 28x minus 12, I can take a 4 out of both of these. So this becomes 7x minus 3. I can't reduce these any further. So these are the final factors of 28x squared plus 51x minus 27. If you take 4x and multiply it by 7x, you'll get 28x squared. 9 and negative 3 will get us your negative 27. And then through foiling, you'll find that you'll end up with 51x. So reducing your binomials is the last step. And that's how you use the Xbox method of factoring.